Amen. I want to, well, one, as always, really just thank God, um, as my mom did, because there is so much to to be grateful for. And for myself personally, especially today, because a few days ago, the Lord blessed me to see 25 years. And that's a lot in, in this day and age and its climate. I know with the, the way medicine is set up and the way dietary things work, people are seeing longer lifespans, but let's not take anything for granted. To receive another year is a blessing in itself, let alone to see another day. So I'm grateful for that. And that leads me to our Bible study for tonight, which is simply entitled Gratefulness. Now, we hear that a lot, you know, those of us who have a a real relationship with Christ. And they have so many gospel songs that I can think of that talk about gratefulness. Well, what is it? What really is gratefulness? Well, we're familiar with the, the term thankful or showing gratitude. Well, I read an article, and I'll have that linked uh, in the description for this, but being thankful or, or showing gratitude, that's a, a feeling. You're, you have a feeling of appreciation. You're, you're thankful for something when someone gives you a gift, when someone helps you out, when someone is just there for you. You're thankful. You show gratitude toward them. But being grateful, especially in a biblical context, because it has everything to do with the way we serve God, being grateful, even as defined by the the Oxford Dictionary and Merriam Dictionary, it is an action of showing the appreciation toward whomever you feel gratitude toward. In our case, We show our appreciation or our gratefulness toward God by continually serving him, not asking a question at every single drop of a dime or him telling us something. And we have to to just question him down and and riddle ourselves with self-doubt or anything else. But no, being grateful toward God is waking up each day that he blesses you with and just saying thank you for another day by going out of your way to help brighten someone else's day because of what God has done for your life. Being grateful is receiving God's choice blessings and then finding a way to use your blessings to be a blessing to another person. And that's what it's all about, y'all. That That's the purpose of the family of faith, for us to be there for one another, to show this world exactly how our God works by being what he is and that is love by showing one another what love really looks like by doing the work and god gave us the greatest example when he came down in a body like yours and mine and got hung on a cross i'm grateful for that not for the fact that he had to die but i'm grateful for the fact that he loves us so much that even before i knew him That even though we didn't deserve it, but there's a thing called grace and mercy. I'm grateful that he said, you know what? I love them too much. And if I don't do this, well, then they're doomed to perish. But God. And there's just so much to be grateful for. I could sit here all day and name things I am actually grateful for because my gratitude and it's all thanks to God comes with a showing of it, not just words, but being backed by action, because that's who our father is. So with gratefulness being on the table, let's hop into the scriptures, because, again, there is a lot that we could discuss. So why not hear it? And the whole point of the ministry is to change the perspective. So let's look at it from God's point of view. Let's stop worrying about the things that bug us and the things that we don't have. And let's show some appreciation for what we do have. As my mom prayed, the fact that we have homes we can go to and bathe in a refrigerator that has food or wake up in the morning and be in shelter, have warm clothes, all these things we can take for granted because sometimes we do. They are blessings. And with that, just (laughs) let's show God how much we really appreciate him. So we'll start off 
in Psalm 139 verses 1 through 12. And my mom actually sent this to me today. And as I was reading through it, it really hit home, especially in terms of feeling grateful, because a lot of times, especially what Psalm talks about, 139 talks about, sometimes we feel lonely, not necessarily alone, but we just get lonely sometimes. It's just a human thing. But with here, it reminded me that when that deception of loneliness tries to creep up, always remember that you are never alone. So Psalm 139, and I will go ahead and put that on screen. All right. So the Bible says, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You're, you place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave or to hell itself, as the King James says, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest oceans, even when even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. So we start off here with something I find, let's say, truly exquisite about God. We know from Jesus' own mouth that he promised us to never leave us nor forsake us. That's a promise. And we know that God carries out his promises because he watches over his word so that it can be performed so that everything he says will come into fruition. That's why our God is so awesome, because he is incapable of failing. So check it out. We see the psalmist showing his appreciation for what God just does in, in his life. And we can show the same thing because we can take these cues. Psalm 139, and you can read all of it in its entirety, but the first 12 verses were what we needed for tonight's lesson. It's that regardless of where you are, what you're doing, what you've been through, what you may go through, doesn't matter what happens, God is always there. When you have a relationship with him, and that's the kicker here, when the relationship is built and you and God are like this now, because the second you accept Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior, that's it. You're good. You're set. From there, you can keep growing. You can do as the Bible says and explore the depth and the deep of the word to get more and more and more. We see that no matter what happens, where you go, who may be out to get you, if problems seem like they're inescapable, don't worry about that. Because as he said, as the psalmist said, you can never escape from the spirit of God, meaning that if God is both going ahead of you and following you, he's prepared the way he's walking you down it. He's taken up the rear like we talk about, and he's on both sides to make sure that nothing can affect you. Well, with that being said, that means that be grateful because the trial, the tribulation, the storm, the chaotic event, whatever you're dealing with, with whatever you're going through, God has allowed it to grow you. We talked about it last week when we talked about endurance as our topic, that when we are in this fight of life, that when we get knocked down, that's OK. Dust yourself off. Get up because you're not falling in sin anymore. You just take a little slip in Christ but God is now holding you so you never fall. God makes sure that whatever life tries to throw at you, whatever tactic the enemy is trying to use against you, 
it won't prosper. But instead, he uses it as a footstool for you, just like Psalms 23 says, to elevate you, to pick you up, to push you to further and higher heights, because he knows the plans he has for you. And what are they? They are for good and not for evil. They are to prosper you, to give you a hope because he is your hope and a future. And we know, according to the Bible, I believe in Colossians chapter three, that our true identity is wrapped up inside of Jesus. And when he's revealed to the whole world, then they too can start to share in his glory. So what is there to be grateful about here? Be grateful because God Almighty has made you his number one priority. And because he's omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, he can cater to every single one of his children at the exact same time, but never not give you his full 100%. God can give you 100% at every hour of every minute of every second of every single day of your life until he brings you home. And that's the coolest part about the relationship to me personally, because even though there are so many of us, a countless number, he gives you his all. And I'm grateful for that, because in a household full of children, mom and dad can only give so much to each child. But with God, he gives everything to each child. And I do mean everything. So when we look out in life, when things get bad, when we're on the up and up and when we're real low, God is always there. And I'll skip ahead for a second. I really don't like doing it, but I just feel the Lord unctioning me. It's that it's his will that you have joy. It's his will that you have peace. It's his will that nobody perishes. So if it's his whole pri priority and pr prerogative to make sure that you are joyful and that you are full of peace, but not just any peace, his peace, because the peace he gives us, this world can't. So that means it can't take it away. So when you build the relationship with God, be grateful because now you are permanently cemented into eternal peace, eternal joy. It's everlasting. It is not circumstantial. I got a new car. I'm happy. But after you drive it for a week, it's just meh. It's not like that with God. When you got saved, he gave you joy. When you got saved, he gave you peace. And as you grow in the relationship, you are allowing God to remove doubt and seeds of iniquity from your heart so that his all encompassing joy can encompass you just that much more. And I'm grateful for that because I've shared my story with y'all. I used to be very angry, very self-loathing, low in self-esteem. I was my own worst enemy like we all are. But one day I just I gave up on that. And I said, you know what? I grew up in the church. My grandmother, my mom, Everyone I know who is saved rave about God's love and his peace and his joy and every other amazing quality of our father. So I said, I'll try it for myself. And when I did, I, I can't begin to 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 explain and sometimes comprehend just how good God is. But I'm grateful. And I show that by doing the work, not so I can brag. Not so that you can brag on me, but so that our father can get the praise. Because if I feel ecstatic every single day I'm blessed to wake up, then that means that someone else can feel that way too. And all they need is the relationship with the master. And they'll be blessed too. And I love God so much for that. So we move forward now. In John chapter 14, verses 23 to, through 27, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, and John 15, verses 11 through 12. And I will put that on screen. So the Bible says, Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. Please keep that in mind as we continue reading. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. Keep that in mind as well. 
And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. First Thessalonians 5 says, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And John 15, Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So I skipped here while we were still in Psalm, but check it out because there are the two things I wanted you to to keep in mind as we were reading. Jesus says, all who love me will do what I say. Let's start there. We go further down into the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And it says that we are to always be joyful, to never stop praying or pray without ceasing, which means let's have a constant active relationship with our father. Like how those of us who truly love one another, we keep a constant form of communication, whether it be via text, phone or going see them. We keep in touch. That's what it's saying right here. Stay in touch with your father. Don't don't ever stop. Just stay in touch. And then it says to be thankful in all circumstances, because that's God's will for those of us who belong to Christ. So where am I going with this? Like I said, while we were in Psalms, God's whole prerogative, his number one priority after he saves your soul is to make sure that you are full of joy, that The communication never stops, that y'all are always touching bases and that you are thankful because, as we saw, his spirit never departs from you, that our comforter or the advocate, the Holy Spirit, is there every step of the way teaching us, bringing things back to our remembrance, praying on our behalf because we don't know how we ought to pray. So the Holy Spirit prays for us with utterances and groanings that no one but God understands and God when we pray even if the words don't match or not even match even if the words can't describe what we're trying to process he is a reader of the heart so he knows what we need and he knows what we're asking for and the best part he already knows the prayer before you prayed it and it's answered he's just waiting to hear from you because he wants the communication so To wrap that up, God's will for you, his assignment on your life, one of many, is for you to bask or abide in his joy, in his peace. And anyone who loves God, as Jesus said, meaning that you have an active relationship and you are constantly chasing after that mark that he has laid in front of us to see. Then we are doing what he's asking us to do. That's to be in his joy, to be in his peace, to love one another by spreading it. Right? Sounds great. But doesn't this sound crazy? Jesus also says, anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. So if you don't love God, you won't obey him. Got it. Check. But what does that consist of? Aside from just sin, and indulging in sin, and lustful pleasures, and anything that makes you feel good, quote unquote, it also means that you aren't looking for joy. Remember the lie we talk about so often that Satan is trying to sell people? Well, the lie, one of the biggest ones, is that things in this world, people, money, fame, sex, drugs, alcohol, just anything, that we can produce will give you some form of joy, but we're not chasing joy. We're chasing something to fill the hole and everything that we seek can't do the job because it is, it's like us. It's fading in the wind. 
It's like the, the dew drops on the grass there in the morning and then gone in the blink of an eye. They're like the, the flowers in the valley. They look beautiful. And then all of a sudden they're just gone or they're like the clouds. It was getting ready to rain today and didn't. And now there's probably not a cloud in the sky. That's the kind of, of, of lifespan we have. It's, it's fetal. It, it's, it's mortal. It's gone as soon as it gets here. But with God, it's everlasting. The joy he gives us never go away. You may feel like you don't have joy because you're unhappy with something. But remember, everything like that that affects you is just a lie from the enemy who wants to throw you off your game. But God, if you were here last week, is telling you to get up because it's round two. But instead of you fighting the fight, because you have now accepted me as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to step in your place and I'm going to fight for you because the battle's not yours. It's the Lord's. So to wrap that nice little hunk of scripture up, if you love God for real and you really have a relationship with him, well, then stop focusing on things that make you feel bad. Stop looking at all the negative aspects of life because, yeah, there are a lot. But look at the bright side. God Almighty, the creator of everything, whom we betrayed as a species, loved you so much that he died for you personally. The Bible says that Christ died once for all. For all. For all. Not the white people, not the black people, not the, the Mexicans, not our friends in Asia or any just everybody. Every single person he died for you. If you're a human being, then you meet the criteria for salvation. That's all God requires is for you to be a human. And we all are. So what's the next step? Show some faith. The faith gets activated when we hear the word of God. I'm grateful that God has enough of us who have thrown caution to the wind to say, I don't care what people think. I don't care if they think I'm crazy or quote unquote Jesus freak or any other derogatory slanderous thing they want to say. This feeling that I have, this joy, this peace, this discipline that has been instilled inside of me and is being continuously being refined through sanctification, that all stems from the master. And because I have his love, I'm not a slave to sin anymore. I'm a friend and a child in the household. And again, I'm skipping, but so what? The point you need to know is that you are loved beyond compare. And when you get that relationship with the Lord, you can start expressing all the things to be grateful for. Because I have a family, not just a biological family, not just friends who have become family, but I have a family that have been grafted into the tree, just like I was, that are now reborn as new creatures. So we were here from jump with God in terms of the birthing process, because now we were born into the family. We are kings and queens of the, with the Most High. We are joint heirs to the throne. I have a lot to be grateful for, because in my 25 years, I'm here. In my 25 years, I, I don't have children out of wedlock in my 25 years. I, I'm in my right mind. And there are so many people my age or older or younger that are going through absolute just hell because they don't know who God is. They get told about Buddha or 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 meditation or self-discipline or this shrine of the black Madonna or all these other crazy things that can't possibly help you. But when you hear about a man named Jesus who wants to give you living water, the, the water that will allow you to never thirst again, bread that will keep you from going hungry ever again, a home, a true home, not this house that I currently reside in, but a home and a family, a place where you belong and have meaning and are cared for. I'm grateful, y'all, because God made all those provisions for you and for me. He made a way out of no way by becoming the way. And now he wants to share everything he has 
with you. And all you have to do is trust them. It, it's really simple. So we move forward to Ephesians chapter three, verse six, Romans 11, verses 17 through 24 and Romans eight, verses 35 through 39. And I'll put that up. The Bible says, and this is God's plan. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Christ Jesus. Romans eleven seventeen says, but some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people of Israel, have been broken off and you Gentiles who were branches from a wild olive tree have been grafted in. So now you also receive the blessing. God has promised Abraham and his children sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. That would be Jesus. But you must not brag about being grafted in to replace the branches that were broken off. You are just a branch, not the root. Well, you may say those branches were broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you are there because you do believe. So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. Notice how God is both kind and severe. He is severe toward those who disobeyed, but kind to you if you continue to trust in his kindness. But if you stop trusting, you also will be cut off. And if the people of Israel turn from their unbelief, they will be grafted in again. For God has the power to graft them back into the tree. You, by nature, were a branch cut from a wild olive tree. So if God was willing to do something contrary to nature, by grafting you into his cultivated tree, he will be far more eager to graft the original branches back into the tree where they belong. And then Romans 8, 35 says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us? If we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death, as the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Remember, nothing can. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So. Let me start by clearing up a misconception that some people have sadly been instilled with by fear. As we read in Romans 11, it says that if we stop trusting in God, then we could be excommunicated from the tree, meaning we can be ungrafted. Well, here's the thing, and we read it in Romans 8, 35 through 39. It's that when you have an actual relationship with Jesus, not you just go to church and you're churched and you get blessed because you're around the fire and a lot of it rubs off on you or there's someone just in your corner praying for you. No, when you have a real one on one relationship with God, because I can guarantee you and I'm speaking from experience and anyone else who really loves the Lord can vouch for me. It's that we have moments of disbelief. We have moments where it's real hard to trust God's plan because we're going through a lot because this human condition of ours makes it difficult sometimes to just get with the program. And remember that if God has brought me 20 years here, then why would he choose today to stop bringing me forward? When you have a relationship with Christ Jesus, you can go through this human condition of ours because it's never going to stop until God delivers you from this body of affliction. And thank God for Jesus 
for being the firstborn of, of the dead, because now we can rise with him. Back on topic. When you have that relationship with God and the disbelief happens, because it does sometimes when you may not pray every day like you should, because it happens sometimes. I'm telling you from personal experience, when you start to have a few doubts that does not disqualify you from God because your soul is now anchored in the Lord. What it's talking about, and I'm glad it mentions the children of Israel explicitly, is that they were God's chosen people from the get go. He made them to show them off as a treasure to the world so that others would flock to him. But they keep messing up like we do. Even after salvation, we keep messing up. And those who reject Christ, not just the Israels, but any anyone in the world who rejects Christ, you're you're playing a dangerous game. You're playing on pins and needles that are on fire, that are doused in, in venom and are just waiting to, to destroy you. But as Romans 11 went on to say that God has the power to graft anyone he sees fit into his special olive tree or the vine. If we go to John 15, who is Jesus? Because he is the vine and we are the branches. See the correlation here, y'all? When we are in the vine, we get pruned. It doesn't mean we get cut off. But just like how the potter puts the pot into the oven to purify it, the impurities come off. That's what the pruning process is. So I'm grateful that even though my human condition is still here and I'm going to mess up, I'm going to make mistakes, I'm going to just sometimes make the decision to do wrong, even though I know better. But I'm human. I'm imperfect. I'm going to do stupid things at times that God's love, because as we saw toward the end, that nothing in all creation, not even your own stupidity, once you've built the relationship, can remove you from God's love because we are now anchored in to him via V Christ Jesus, our Lord. So be grateful that once you get into the relationship, you can't be excommunicated because now you are reborn as a new creature because any man who is in Christ Jesus is now a new creature. Behold, the old life has passed away and the new has begun. And that gets further backed up because Christ Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, meaning that he is your beginning and your end, that whatever you did in the past, it doesn't even count anymore because God has taken it, thrown it into the sea of forgetfulness, and you're good to go. When you mess up in Christ, pray for real. Have a penitent heart, meaning that you don't want to go back and keep making the same mistakes. It's just the human condition occurred, which it will. And God, in his grace and mercy, has now given us the, the right to be his sons and daughters anyone who believes in him and Jesus who has entered back into his glory is our great high priest making sure that the throne room is full of grace and mercy so when you need it most all you got to do is pick up the phone and say father help me and what happens like the good parent he is he baby I'm already working on it don't even sweat it I got you so we wrap up in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, 1 Timothy 1, verse 15, and John 3, 16. And I will put that on screen. So the Bible says the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian, the boots of the warrior, and the uniforms blood stained by war will be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, his, the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, 
everlasting father, prince of peace. His government and its peace will never end. There's the everlasting showing itself again. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. Matthew 121 says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 1 Timothy 115 says, This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I am the worst of them all. In John 3.16, Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the thing I'm most grateful for, the thing I love God the most for, above delivering me out of everything imaginable and still getting me through because sanctification is a lifelong process. I'm grateful that he loved me because I'm making it personal right now so much that in the midst of my dirt, my filth, my insanity, all the craziness that I was doing and was comprised of, he said, I love Jr. so much that I'm going to go be born to die for him. And when you make it personal, because my grandmother always taught me, you got to make it personal. That's the only way it hits home. That when he died for Beverly, when he died for Mary, when he died for, for Broderick, for Meeks, for Deja, for, for Belva, for Rudy, for Paula, for whatever your name is, when he died for you, you start to look at God differently. Oh, you meant that when you said that, you call me a friend, that I'm no longer a slave. And if I want to get out of slavery, out of bondage, all I have to do is come to you because I trust and believe I'm tired and I got a lot of burdens on my back. And you want to give me rest? You want to give me peace for my soul? You want me to learn of you because you're meek and lowly of heart? You want to swap places with me? Where do I sign up? <laughs> this is a dream come true. I'm grateful, y'all, because we serve a God who is so amazing that when he should have just killed us all, he chose to save us. When he should have let us all drown in the flood, he saved just enough, eight people, so that we could keep going. That even after he hit the partial reset button and we still acting crazy, acting like there is no God 99% of the time, he still loves us because he has a remnant that would be you and me and the rest of our brothers and sisters who don't care what the world says. I don't care about stuff. I don't care about any of this because it's going to fade away just like this body will. But my God, who has my spirit, which is eternal, I now have a place with him. And I'm grateful for all the wonderful blessings he has placed in my life these past 25 years. Most importantly, being blessed to minister to y'all because it is a blessing to pick up the gospel plow. And so with that, I thank God. I'm grateful and I do my best to show it each and every day. And we all should. Does that mean we will? No, because again, we're human. We're, we're not perfect. We messed up, y'all. But I thank God for Jesus because now we have the one who can help us when we're weak. We have the one who can help us when we're out of stamina. We have the one who can help us when the joy and the peace seem like they aren't there. But I promise you, just like him, because his joy, his peace, his love, they don't go nowhere and neither does he. So Heavenly Father, we come before you saying thank you, Lord. We thank you for having a father that we can be proud to serve, having a family that we can be proud to call our own, because this pride isn't one conceived of human misconception, but instead, Lord, it is a pride knowing that we are a part of your kingdom, 
that we have been given divine privileges, that your God, Matthew, your unmerited favor works in circles all around our lives, making sure that we have everything that we need, that we are being afforded opportunities that others don't simply because we know you and we love you, God, that when others see us, that they don't necessarily see us, but that they see your light shining through us, God. So that they too can ask that question, how do I get like you? And we can point them right to you, Father. And we thank you for that. We have so much to be appreciative for. That we can thank you for the stuff now. For what you've done. And for what you're going to do. Because you are the God that is yet to come. You haven't revealed your whole hand yet, God. And we thank you that we have the divine privilege of being a part of the family, of being able to work with you hand in hand, and that you we get the benefit of just being obedient because you do the work. We don't even have to lift a finger. All we have to do is be available to you, God. So, Lord, I just want to say thank you because th- that's the least I can do. I want to say thank you, because even in my error, when I know better, you don't cut me out. But instead, you you give me an opportunity to learn and grow from it. So I thank you that when the enemy tries to bring up the past, all I have to do is refer him to you because your nail scarred wounds say it all. So, Father God, we love you. And we adore you and we thank you. And I ask that that if there's anyone out there who tunes into this message that doesn't have a relationship with you, that they would get to have one because it's the best thing that has ever happened to my life. And it is the gift that keeps on giving. So, Father, we love you. We thank you. And we'll be sure to give your name all the praise, all the honor and all the glory, which you so rightly deserve. It's these things we thank you for. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hello, beloved, and thank you so much for stopping by today. It's my prayer that you received something truly beautiful out of today's message, whether it's to keep pressing toward that glorious standard that God has for our lives, or if you aren't a part of the family, to come and join us as we celebrate the new life that Jesus has given us. Heavenly Father, we come before you in prayer saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you that despite all that's going on in the world, that you are God and you will always be God. We thank you for the sacrifice that your darling son Jesus paid for on that cross called Calvary, Lord. We thank you that now through the shedding of blood, there is a remission for sins and we have a true path to eternal life, God. I pray that all those under the sound of my voice would either be encouraged to keep pressing towards your throne room, God, to receive grace and mercy or to come and join the family so that they can shed off the old and embrace the new. It's these things we thank you for as you continually lead us down the paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. Please don't forget to like, to comment, and to subscribe. As we move forward, remember new content coming at you every Saturday, and it's our prayer that you would be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.